This is going to be a review on the Reliable Electric Pure Sine Wave Inverter. This is a 12 volt model, 2000 watt. And uh, what kind of got me onto this thing is uh, I've seen it on YouTube everywhere. Um, then I started doing a search on YouTube and found many different people uh, playing around with these. And also, then I just started watching just random solar videos and actually seen this thing on people's wall. And it wasn't in the title or anything, it just happened to be there. And uh, another thing about it is kind of cool is it is it like a professional looking design. You know, it's a metal box. You know, it's not like a car amp type of look. You know, extruded aluminum car amp looking thing. So it has a nice professional look if you want to have a you know, a low cost inverter that's pure sine wave. And you know, you want a professional looking wall, power wall. You know, this right here is a good start. But, um, already I've seen some, uh, different people, it seems like, depending on, you know, what model you get and what voltage rating you get, um, they're inconsistent. Like, one guy will have no trouble at all going, you know, near, near max, and then there's other ones that's not quite able to get there, or maybe three quarters of the way there, you know, uh, wattage wise but um this is going to be a three-part video as of right now um we're going to do you know this is, here is uh check out the packaging we'll check out the inside of this um hypothesize on it a little bit and um the second part will be testing it we'll load it up and see exactly how far it can go to uh up to the 2000 watts um, and we're also going to stack like different types of inductive loads on it to see if it's stable uh, doing so. And we'll also monitor power regulation throughout uh, whether or not it has big steps in, or drops in voltage as you go up the wattage. Um, for 2000 watts, a lot of what I'm probably going to have to team it up with is electric heater, electric heater and maybe an inductive load. You know, because you know, 2,000 watts, you know, this is a smaller inverter, but still, 2,000 watts, it's kind of hard to do with just lights and uh, motors and things. Alright, well, uh, check out the packaging. Okay, it did show up here, double box. Um, this is the outer box, you notice it is double thickness. And then it was down the side of these, on each end, protected pretty well. There was a gap between them. You know, maybe like this. Um, and then the outside box, or the inside box, sorry, is like retail, like, um, you could resell this. Like, if you bought a whole bunch of them, you can take them out of the outer box, put them on a shelf, and it looks like you got, you know, a nice painted box. That's with a warranty card and eight 30 amp fuses, so there's 240 amps of fuse, you know, 240 amps there. Um, the owner's manual, I don't want to open that up on my channel because sometimes I get copyright problems with that. I did look it through it and it is a little chinglish, but uh, you could tell somebody, uh, they had a professional, you know, in China make the owner's manual. It wasn't just somebody trying their best. Um, the cabling that came with it, which is pretty cool because most inverters don't come with any kind of cabling. Um, I have seen other people open these up and they'll come with one set. And you just, you're just like, yeah, that's not enough. But this did come with two sets of these. So double running, this looks like 8 gauge. Double running 8 gauge would probably do what this inverter is going to do. Um, I don't know about indefinitely, you know, if it could run, if you had a massive battery bank. Um, mine could run for probably an hour and a half at max on this, just guessing, but it's okay cabling for, for uh, 2,000 watts. More than likely this machine isn't going to make it there anyways, but um, it's pretty cool it even came with cables. Well, you can always test your setup. You know, you put set you a setup and you 
you know, put these cables on and for this length, that's another thing too, is the length of the cable. You know, you got, you know, if you if you used to add two more feet to this, it wouldn't be good enough. But for if you're going from your battery to here, this would probably be adequate. All right, so the case one from the outside, we got um, DC lugs. Um, they seem to be decent quality. I particularly would like to see them further apart, but this is okay. They're not back to back at least. Um, plastic. Eh, it does seem to be like that spatula type kind of material. It'll probably handle a little bit of heat. The fans. Um, they have branding on them, but it's in Chinese. Brushless. I see brushless on there. Uh, the other end of it. So we got. I don't know which one's battery voltage or output voltage, but it looks like it has both. Some running and over a little lighting, and it also looks like you can hook it up to your breaker box. These outlets right here are generally okay but it's not a GFI type setup which generally you see them on like A grade machines I did have a, just did a review on a A grade looking machine but once you open it up it was not but <laughs> it was close to it if they would have did a little bit more branding items inside at least I would have called it an A grade this one here is you know looking B grade like A, B, and C is pretty much what I'm looking at here. Generally, C grade is like it'll meet, reach half capacity. Um, cheap outlets. A lot of times, when I I'll say C grade, if like you got like a universal one on here, a universal, it's not like an outlet for your area. I would call that C grade because they can't even spend enough money to a few extra cents to give a region. Uh, receptacle but they did here all right we'll open it up all right we got the top off and I'm a little irritated already with the amount of transformers that's in here and also they're kind of small um, you know it just depends on what frequency they're running them at and what the size of the windings which they do seem to be not fine wound they're finer than what the another inverter I looked at that had three and these transformers are a little smaller than what it had and I was kind of guessing it to do about 1600 watts I could never I didn't really could ever find out because the machine was broken I I wasn't able to fix it but um so I was just you know hypothesizing with it but I did a search on YouTube looking for um, this particular model 2001 and I found one I think it was 24 volts somebody popped the top and it had four of these in it and so you'd automatically figure that the 12 volt model would have four because it's harder to ramp up 12 volts than it is for uh, 24 so what they did here I have no idea why it is a spot here has places for extra fets and it even has little uh, you know little drivers and stuff down here for it but it's not in here um, the capacitors has nice capacitors on it a thousand microfarads this would be in between the step up and output board this would be the caps for the output board um, the cabling inside is a little shy for the length of it, it'd probably be just fine. Um, you know, you're only going four, four to five inches, but there is only you know one positive, one negative for each transformer. Um, each boost stage has its own fusing, so that suggests that it probably you know, turns these on as load increases on it. It is fused for 240 amps, so it is possible 
that it could reach 2,000 watts because you need 200 amps of fusing to do that. Um, another thing that's kind of neat is it does use a TO247 package on each one of these boost stages. A lot of times they used four TO220s, you know, on other inverters. And you got, uh, this would be the bridge rectifier rectifying the, uh, turning it back into DC after it goes to here, turns it into DC, and then it sends the DC off to your output board to be turned back into AC. And then uh, these are IRFs, so they're probably searchable. So you probably should, you shouldn't have any trouble finding these. Um, these right here, they just have like an F symbol on them, like a picture. I don't like exactly sure what those are. I haven't tried to Google the part numbers on any of these things. I kind of like, I don't really mind having generic items. As long as you can find them. I don't mind that at all. Because these FETs are kind of like fuses. It's generally when a verdict was working, this is what you're going to find. Um, I also like the fact that, see, these right here, I believe, are the pre-drivers for these. And given that they are a decently sized package, I don't know what package that would be. They are a decent sized package. More than likely, these aren't going to blow up along with these. Um, the output board, the pre-drivers on it, I think are just little surface mount things, which, eh. I, I'd rather send, see something, at least some BJTs. That way it's something that a person can actually replace. Um, the control boards are kind of neat. They seem to be pretty easily be replaceable. Something went wrong with them. Um, these machines seem to be kind of like... Custom, custom, uh, you could customize them like they have several different models as you can see right here. I think they actually use, for the most part, the same model uh, throughout. They just change probably the these boards, these little control boards, maybe a couple other items, and the same model can do several different, you know, sub models. Um, it's very clean looking design. That's really cool. Um, it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't even have enough components to run. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a, a stripped down chopper motorcycle. You know, everything, you see the major components and barely anything else. I mean, there's these uh, control boards have some really small surface mount ICs on them. So everything then, you know, brain-wise is just consolidated to that board. Now you got your typical toroids and stuff for the waveform. But, uh, yeah, I would have liked to have seen, like, double runs of these to each one instead of just a single run. Um, these look like 10-gauge. Um, but... For the price point of this machine, it was two hundred and twenty dollars to my door uh, for you know two thousand watt sine wave. So even if this thing is capable, of, say, hitting fifteen hundred and running comfortably at twelve hundred, you know, like continuous at twelve hundred, you know, it's a good, a good deal. Professional looking machine for. You know, the price of the OSP tire haul, and basically, I'm kind of guessing it's going to be about the same capacities of the tire claw. Um, so, anyways, I think that's about all I got for this, but like I said, there's going to be three different videos. This one here, and then there's going to be loading it down. And then the third one is going to be um, over time. I'll come back after a couple months, and give you my thoughts like things if I ran into any issues or I noticed any you know funny things about it um, you know I'll be able to show you how many uh, as long as it doesn't turn into like one of the machines it constantly kicks off I should be able to add up on kilowatts how many kilowatts I use while using it 
But anyways, I'll uh, catch you guys in the next 